Just recording yourself. Okay, I'm recording now. It's fine. Just go. <laughs> okay, after waiting for 10 minutes of the meeting, welcome everyone. This is the fourth podcast we're running of the Theory Crafting Roundtable. Um, I'm Artisans, and I'm joined today by Azel, uh, Ten Ten Zajef. Unfortunately, Jinx and Citri had to sit this one out, but we're joined today by a special guest, Slice. Um, feel free to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Slice or X Slice or whatever you want to call me. Um, slice of pizza is probably the easiest one because you know pizza slice is always nice. Uh, eh. Stream on Twitch, make YouTube content focused on majorly educational stuff, but not super mint or not super like heavy theory craft focus because a lot of players kind of just want to be spoon fed information. So it's kind of a mix of both. Uh, I'm not too, uh, well, I personally don't really watch too much content, but I'm sure some of us in here have seen some of your stuff. Um, yeah. So, we can go ahead and talk about whatever. Cause like, I still have, um, like with regards to uh, theory crafting stuff, right? I have it in my head. I just don't like put it on to YouTube because it gets way too dank. <laughs> if yeah, is. I think that's good. So I just get a different perspective. Some of the um, thing that Kachi main commonly get is like these people are like way too dank, and I think it's always get uh, good to get like a different perspective from from someone who do like similar stuff but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we want to do the introduction for the rest of the people. Do we Do we really care? Because we've been here for like forever. But we can quickly go for it, right? I, I get it, Sensman. You don't care all. about me. I get it. I It's it's fine. I you didn't even go for myself. I see okay. how it is. Mr. Math... Mr. Psyox math guy. Okay, yeah, go for it. Alright, go for it, Mr. Just Psyox. Yeah, yeah. Just everyone introduce yourself. Slice might not know all of us. I can... I can go. Uh, I am the Jeff. I stream on Twitch. I help Zyox with his videos. Um, I mold a lot. What? That's Especially yesterday. A lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, crash on our pretty thick, sorry. Uh, I'm Ten Ten, and I'm Chinese. Thank you. That's all you need to know, pretty much. That's the only part you really need to know. Are you saying that Hong Kong is no I'm gay? What the f <laughs> Hold on. Whoa. That's <laughs> I'm not gonna say any. <laughs> okay. Um yeah, I'm Azel. Uh I am also Chinese, but yeah. I also do a lot of theory crafting. Uh I help write a lot of the KQM YouTube videos. Um yeah, I do a lot of math. Um, I'm Artisans. I'm like the main point of contact for theory crafting and kitchen mains. Uh, it's a really big Discord server, really big website. We have a YouTube channel and we stream on Twitch now. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, theory crafting kind of in the West lives and breathes in KQM these days. So, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Okay. Before we uh, start, I want to do a quick advertisement that next week we might have a professional game designer joining us to talk about game designing in Genshin like how a business design how the current event is designed so be sure to show up and i don't know youtube frog and like catch up on the vod anyway we can uh get started on uh today's topic that's my response to kick weight <laughs> <laughs> okay um which topic you, is there any topic you guys wanted to start with? Oh shit, I, mean, my, I have some written down, but my topic is. Eating. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't read the, the list of topics, so. Okay. Um, I will just jump on whatever, whatever you guys start talking okay. about. Okay. Sure. I teach and you start to start whatever. <laughs> yeah. So there's like, we can just start with theory crafting in general. Uh, we kind of say that theory crafting is pretty hard to approach, and it's a little way too dank. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of misconceptions about what theory crafters might hold the casual players to and what casual players might hold to theory crafters. Um, like, so what do you guys think? What do theory crafters care about and what they should care about? Um, what should casual players know about theory crafters? Something like that. Um, I mean, we all make content for the Genshin community. 
So we should we're like we have a pretty good idea of what we present ourselves as. <clears throat> I think I think the biggest thing is just tier crafters aren't there to force you to play meta. Just like the the amount of people like sure there are some people who who feel that it's their duty to force other people to play meta, but that's generally not like reliable theory crafters or content creators that focus on content creation oh, sorry content creators that focus on theory crafting oh. um i think in general like whenever i talk to more casual players they just kind of look up our guides and then like you have like this space of players in between a casual player and a theory crafter that like kind of gets really angry at people when they don't like prove that they're right and there's a lot like genshin is just one of those kind of games where it's really easy for like a bunch of misinformation to fly around yeah i can i can agree with that oh you want to go sorry sorry mm -hmm. oh i was just gonna say like the reason i, I feel like the reason why a lot of echo chambers uh, spread spread misinformation is because um the genshin community is really young right there's a there's a lot of mobile players and like the the reach of the game initially is um, a bunch of people who primarily play free to play, right? And they don't know much better than to echo what other people tell them to echo. And that's why, for Genshin specifically, I think theory crafting is a little bit uh, potentially harder to get into um, because I don't think that the younger audience understands that in order to really do theory crafting for a game, you kind of have to love the game, right? Like, who who is actually going to do the math? Like, if you don't care about the game, why are you going to go into the math for the game, right? So, like, they, theory crafters try their best to help people understand the game a little bit better than just playing. Like, it's like optimizing on top of the waifu meta, right? Like, we break down characters for you. And then you guys can take the information and be like, okay, cool. I can I can play with my character um, in a more optimized fashion while still having a lot of fun. Um, only problem is I think uh, a lot of younger audiences for Genshin dislike or have a lot of like stigmas because of misinformation spread. And this was very prevalent in the first six months, right? With... <clears throat> generic YouTube content and other stuff, right? And it's really hard to battle against that because even though they're younger, they still are loud and obnoxious and angry, you know? So. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say is um, I feel like there's a <clears throat> lot of fear crafting and everyone doesn't necessarily focus on the same thing. For example, I think I know Slice focus on character guides that are like what weapon you should use for your characters, what uh, build you should be using for your characters. I think that's also what Psywalks mostly do. Uh, for me personally, the content I focus around is, is this character worth your primo or not? Uh, because the biggest thing for me is seeing people get really disappointed after they pull a character either with real money or the hard safe primo to realize that the character might not be what they thought it was. Like, good or not, like, just not what they thought it was. And we definitely have seen that a lot in the past with a couple of characters, especially, uh, I mentioned earlier, in the first six months of the game, where um, people didn't really know what was going on, right? right. Uh, so I think there's a lot of different fear crafting. It's like, there's not necessarily one that's like, all and beyond and above all. Uh. Yeah, I know that there are some people other theory crafters who like think theory crafting should be x theory crafting should be y i know some people are like theory crafting should be exclusively um about maximizing the potential of a certain character or of certain characters it should not focus on comparisons between characters at all there are other people who say it should encompass both some people say we should mostly focus on comparisons um things like that i think that like theory crafting in general uh can sometimes i think like it gets stigmatized a lot as people only focus on comparing characters and telling you to play a certain x character while kind of ignoring the fact that some theory crafters 
focus mostly on not caring about like comparing between characters, but more looking at how can we get this one character who may not be the best um, to their ceiling. Um, but yeah, I think that in general, like theory crafting should focus on both parts, but also people should realize that we do both parts. It's not just comparisons. A tough balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to add to what Sly said earlier about like the general public's like vision of theory crafting and why misinformation spreads so much in Genshin specifically, it's more than like I agree that it's very much partly because the community is young, but I think it's also um it's also because Genshin's a game that looks so simple on the surface. Mm. Like in terms of the combat system, it's just you have elements and they react. That's simple, right? Well, then you got <laughs> fucking gauge theory. Then you got like all this bullshit that's like pretty complicated. And even then, like no matter what, if you if you end up going into comparisons, the the criteria for the comparison aren't really set in stone because the hardest content we have is like something you can clear after like three to four months on a new account. So, like, late game players don't really care about min-maxing it too much. And even if you do, it changes all the time. So it's really hard to, like, have a, a set of criteria by which to evaluate units. And then on top of that, evaluating units is complicated because of all the mechanics that a casual player wouldn't understand. But because it looks so simple, there's just so much misinformation that spreads. And then because it's young... Like, the, the early wave of misinformation hasn't been fully corrected yet. Do you think it's kind of like a, I guess, like, <clears throat> Dunning-Kruger thing, where people who are oh, new to the definitely. game are like, yes. oh, it looks so easy, and then you, know? you learn a lot, and you're like, oh, wait, everything's so hard. Yeah, yeah. So, some, sometimes I lurk in, 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 like, help channels in Discords, in Discord servers, and there is a lot of, Dun like, Dunning-Kruger in there. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I uh, can actually bring up a quick example, and don't say such because this is not leaked. But uh, so, so we have Toma coming <laughs> out to oh, at the time of this broadcast. Toma is not out, but he is playable in the hangout, so we kind of know what he does. The point I want to bring up is that a lot of people, when they first saw Toma in the trailer, they assume he's a pyro Sing Shields because the way he worked very similar to Sing Shields. However, after testing him in the hangout currently available in the game, you'll find that he's very, very far off from being a pyro scene shields. In fact, he has almost no... Uh, he's in no way direct in comparison to that. Uh, it's a pyro scene shields, right? So he looked like a pyro scene shields, but he does not actually play like a pyro scene shields. So that could be where mm -hmm. information gets spread. It's like, I, I still see people say, oh my god, Thomas is going to be a pyro scene shields. It's going to work so great, just like scene shields. But in reality, that's nowhere close at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if, right. sorry, yeah, e even if he were exactly Sing Cho but Pyro, he'd be significantly weaker than Sing Cho, because one of the reasons Sing Cho works so well is his kid is Hydro. But then on top of that, there's also the ICD and the damage that he deals. And the damage is somewhat easy to spot, but the ICD isn't something a casual player is going to understand unless they put in the the time to you know ask what the fuck is an ICD. Yeah, that's particularly that. That's like exactly the part. Hey, hey Zajif, what's an ICD? <laughs> Don't say uh, it. I see. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Um, uh, I mean, on the content. It was nice talking kind of... to you guys. I'm gonna leave. Goodbye. Uh, wait, he actually left. <laughs> <Where do> we... <laughs> uh, I see that. In um, I mean, on the content creator side, it's actually really interesting. Um. So we're in like a pretty unique position in KQM where we do a lot of theory crafting and a lot of it like goes through like a lot of like um, a lot of people look at it and like scrutinize it um, and they'll see if you're like bullshitting or not and stuff like that. Right. Like they'll check if what you're saying is true or not. Um, and then we write it down and all that stuff. But KQM has also evolved to produce content. Um, I don't know if you know slice but like kitchen mains's website is like really well like really popular now um yeah. like our visitor count is like massive um yeah 
and it's really hard weird to flex, balance. but okay. Weird flex. It, it's part, it's just, I'm just building up. So like, we're in a unique position where we do a lot of theory crafting at the highest level, but we also produce a lot of content for like casual players. We make infographics, we make YouTube videos, we make uh, written guides, and it's pretty hard to balance it. In fact, um, Azel knows, but we literally have arguments all the time whenever we're writing videos like writing the script for videos with theory crafters because they want something in it but it's way way too dank for like the average player so <laughs> you're right it's it's a really interesting balance to play you know this kind of whole topic is like you can't please everyone right mm -hmm. um as long as you know that the information you provide is substantiated uh that's the most that you can do because if people are people will want to nitpick Right? Because they're going to be like, okay, well, if they actually care, they're going to figure out, uh, they're going to cross check information. And also, if they really care, they're going to like try to do it themselves. They're going to try to like dissect the information. Um, and then, oh, I, thought, I was looking at chat, they were saying way too dink. I thought like my <laughs> mic was exploding. <laughs> Your mic is very soft. Um, but by yeah, the way. so it's, I can turn it I feel like video wise, a lot of people don't go into like, the next threshold of damage dealing because it's usually not necessary to clear content that way we don't have 15 million hp bosses where we actually have to optimize um you know our rotations within the second and when once it gets to that point then it's actually going to be like okay yo we need to talk about like elemental gauge and icd because it's actually important now or else we ain't going to do enough damage you know what i'm saying like it's we we don't need to do that we don't uh, players can enjoy the game without having to take calculus in Genshin, and I don't think they want to take calculus in Genshin. So, um, yeah. And also, on the topic of Xingqiu, <laughs> I feel like this character does everything. <laughs> it's kind of strange, right? Like, <laughs> if, you th if you think about it from a designer's perspective, the complication in this character's kit is non-existent and I think almost every single other character in the game. What do you mean? So, <laughs> mostly talking about his burst, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the structure of his burst is... The power and structure of his burst is hidden behind mechanics that people don't know about. Sure, like you can say that. ICD, right? But does does the general population know what that means? No, but the general population doesn't really need to because the I think the instinctive reaction to the way reactions work is if you apply a lot of an element, which Singcho hits a fuck ton of different swords, it deals it, it applies a lot of the element, and then you can react with someone else. Right. So like I I I agree that like. To understand why it works, you need to understand it. But at the same time, I don't like. I think the average player is gonna see that it works, and it's gonna be, in, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, that makes sense," even if they don't okay. understand how. Do you think he should have been a five-star character? Ooh. For what reason? Ooh, that's a hard question. That's no. A good I'm just question. asking, right? Like, not <laughs> yeah, not for, for like, what reason, but just in general, right? As like from a character I design think standpoint. It's... I think it's really healthy for a game to have the the building the basic building blocks be available to everyone and then the like things that you do with those blocks be locked behind well, what character you decide to roll on with your primo gems, right? Mm -hmm. And Singcho's a building block. Singcho's like a given for an account. I'm sorry for all of those who don't have Singcho in chat. Um my, my condolences but i think it's it's good to have a few of these characters that are really really good at creating at like be, being the basis for something right that you can then build upon right and we have one for each element right we have shaolin for pyro we have shincho for hydro and we have beto for electro yeah it's more better than Chengling, honestly <laughs> Chengling is more the thing you can build with your building block than the like the base building block itself mm. yeah and we're how aware are you of like the meta like 
when we say when we say like what the strongest units are like in terms of like four stars or whatever or maybe in five stars like what do you think of exactly do you mean four stars and five stars strongest in terms um, of just like general usage like abyss usage or so i don't know if i want to like taint like your impression so for example if you ask like almost any theory crafter and you ask them what the strongest units are they will give you three units every single time <laughs> like and it'll be the same three units every single time um so we're just wondering like i, I think it's an interesting question because you asked if Chu should be a five star and a lot of us here agree that like Chu's power about power probably skews towards like probably being a little too strong for how you like how useful he can be and stuff like that so um if we're talking about like strength like just general strength universal usage for units mm -hmm. um it would probably mostly be like the the slash dps supports right so shingcho shaolin kazwa would probably come to my head as the free strongest crazy powerhouses that you don't think are there but carry almost every single composition that they're in mm-hmm I'm pretty sure I know what the three answers are teaching is talking about. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm I know curious what, what like those three answers are that you were thinking of, or like that that you ask. Uh, uh, go ahead and answer. I mean, we're... <laughs> wait, are we talking about four... three or four characters? There's wait, literally three or four characters. On, hold on. We're talking about C zero, five star, C six, four star, right? In com combination, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, C six if the C six is yes. We, it's it's Ben and C two right? <laughs> Yeah. It's Venice Shoes Venti. Every yeah. Every single every time they yeah, yeah, every single yep. fear through would say Venice Shoes Venti. <laughs> so I was I'm pretty interested to hear that slice answer was like pretty Yeah, so different. as much as I think that um I kind of feel like it's illegal to say because <laughs> that was fine, say anything you want. Or, <laughs> or is it actually illegal to say? I don't like, know what you're like say. the fact that I don't add Bennett in there is is because it's it's my Personal choice not to add a healer into those three, right? Because I, Why? when I think of like strongest oh, no. combination building blocks, right? Sorry, can you say that again? So, so for for these three choices, where you guys are like characters that I would choose to build around, right? Well. Let me think again. I, don't, I think the easiest way to visualize it is that if someone comes and asks what's the free strongest character in the game is, then what would be your answers? And obviously for the other people in the call, we, we I think we collectively said like, and then someone want to say it differently, but since she was Ben and Venti, like that would you know be our what? answer. You know what my hot take is? Ten yeah, Azo, what's up? Kazuha is equal to Venti. That's my hot well, take. Well, I, I, I like, I like <laughs> Oswald over Venti in most situations, but I mean, they both basically do the same thing. Just yeah. different types of same things, right? Yeah, that's true. Like, Venti, I think the, the way that you have to think of it is just the way that they scale uh, is dependent on content, which yeah. makes it kind of difficult to compare the two. So like Venti, you have a four with mobs, he <clears throat> trivializes the entire thing. Um, I... I, I value Venti a lot more than Kazuha because mm. Mm. the 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 the, the my, my main reasoning behind it is <clears throat> Venti like re realistically if you pl if you just play the game you explore the whole map you get all the chests you'll get like what six twenty ish thousand primo gems it's enough for like one and a half pity. Mm -hmm. Then with all the wishes and events and shit like that, if you've been playing since the since the start, if you've been playing for a few months, you'll have like three to four, two to four, um, rate up five stars of your choice, and most of the four stars. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, like that means that it, you can either have venti plus one to three five stars of your choice, or Kazuha plus one to three five stars of your choice. But right. with one to three five stars of your choice, and a bunch of four stars, you can make two really strong teams that don't need either Venti or Kazuha. And then you can have one of them for when you need them. And in, in that situation, 
Venti is so much stronger. Right, so it's like a situational thing. Yeah, yes. exactly, right? Cause... That does make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say sucrose, because, like, sucrose oh, just too. does a lot of what that's causes us. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, I mean, that, that that's that's also a, a, a pretty significant reason. Sucrose also just does a lot of what Kazuha does. Um, but I also understand that she's a lot harder to, to pilot effectively than Kazuha is. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people also think just Kazuha just feels better to use. Yeah, he, 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 he feels, feels nice very clear. His, his yeah. animations is, is just... he He's very, very well designed. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think maybe that's just a difference in perspective because mm -hmm. uh, I'm like a dolphin, basically. I have every character except Albedo and Xiao, I think. Um, so I guess like pool priority and pool value um, and stuff like that I is not as... As important, like, for you. as important to me. While you're I mean, like, yeah, you're playing sense. on a free to play account, so it's mm -hmm. more apparent to you. So I guess it's just difference in perspective. And different like, yeah, honestly, I use Kazuha more than I use Venti on my account, right? But you still think Venti is much better? Yes, because and and also most most importantly, it's like when someone asks me which one should I get, like to me the answer is really obvious. Hmm. Because I, I would disagree there, right? If someone were to ask me between Venti or Kazwa, which one to get, I would probably recommend Kazwa to get. Hmm. The only reason why is because... <laughs> that? Yeah, so this is this is where, like, it, it, like Kazwa has kind of warped my perception of Venti a lot. Like, I still use Venti occasionally, right? But every single time I come back to Kazwa, whether it's a C0 or a C1 Kazwa, it just feels smoother in a lot of the time crunches situations mm. in terms of <clears throat> displaceability it just feels better i think i think a part of that is that kazuha's impact on your clears is like pretty consistent but it's also consistently it's, mm. a decent impact right so I, yeah yeah has that's probably the reason why right? a massive impact when he has an impact right but he doesn't always have an impact right 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 yeah that's the difference i i prefer mm -hmm. that five to six second window whereas other people might prefer the 15 second window yeah yeah and i think that generally that's the thing that players with more investment and specifically whales um or or just just players that have been playing like since the start and min maxing mm. they, they they i think they tend to gravitate towards kazuha more because of that because they don't need venti to clear that 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 chamber in enough time they can right. do it with kazuha right but I mean, that's like the some other players right? just can't right like I, it, the mm. the current 12 2 2 like venti yeah. is quite a bit stronger than Kazuha in there. Oh yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. you and remember... if you're struggling on floor 12 and you, you know, you need you need to kill Kenki fast, well having Venti is going to give you a lot more time on your Kenki half. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, do you guys remember that floor 11 where you had to protect the ley line? <laughs> I love uh, that I one. I do remember that one. It, it, I do. It's times like that where I remember, wow, Venti is... <laughs> if you have Venti in that floor, you literally just insta-clear it. There's no mm -hmm. thought behind it. You don't have to worry about a single thing. You literally just slapped a ton of energy recharge on him and spammed his ultimate off cooldown. That's it. Um, and for people who didn't have Venti, they know exactly how painful it is. They know exactly how painful it is. And you're the other side that you had, because Kazo wasn't out at the time, you know you know how hard it was. You know, you felt it. And it came to the point where people were using things like Geo main character. There was tons of videos on how to clear it. Um, you had to micro mm -hmm. it. You had to drop rocks down in front of enemies so that the, the pillar in the middle didn't take any damage. So in that sense, like, yeah, I think Venti in these types of situations, and granted, doesn't always show, but when it does, defense, man. Yeah. yeah, when when it does happen, Venti is irreplaceable there's no other unit that does what he does better and mm. in that sense like yeah venti's really strong uh, but i'm probably on more of the fence with azel here i think they're pretty it's so hard this is like such a subjective thing for me like 
I think Kazuha, I use Kazuha more. I really like him. I think he's very strong, but on the other hand, like when I think about the value of Kazuha, the thing is, is like other animo units could probably do what he does just as just a little bit worse. Um, and it's just hard to recommend something that's like, you know, it feels really good to play and it's just as good as everything else, but at the expense of a unit like Venti. And um, if we're going to loop back to Bennett here, um, it's your personal choice not to add a healer to the list, but I don't know if th this isn't like calling you out or anything. It's just like, it's very interesting that you bring this up because I actually have never really thought of Bennett as like a healer and a healer only. I don't think anyone in theory so, crafting particularly thinks of him like that. Right. So I, I think I'll explain like my thought process, right? Uh, I think um, when I, when I, when I think of those three characters, um, I think of Xing Chou's glue potential for, for the two major comps that we have in the game. One is Freeze, which is really easy for newer players to get into. And the other is Vaporize. Um, these two compositions are uh, a staple for getting into more and more difficult content because either they have very high crowd control, which allows people to maximize their DPS, or the DPS is maximized off of reactions. Um, um Xiang just, Li just, just to interject yeah. real quick here, just I think it I think it's important to mention that there's also comms that don't rely on those mechanics that are just as strong. Just oh sorry, I need to add electro charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Jeff was reminding me to to include electro charge. I I apologize. Yes. Not and only that, melt, melt, we also got melt gone you. Oh my god. <laughs> no, 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 that's not Xing Chou though, sorry. right? Xing Chou's not oh, not, yeah, not okay, for melt gone, right? Yeah, we're we're yeah. talking about Xing Chou only. Yeah, yeah. This but yeah, like only. I I think Taser is very very underrated. Yeah, yeah. No, Taser is absolutely incredible for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> you, I saw the chat and I'm like, ah, oh, the Jess is reminding me about Electro Charge. My bad. Um, especially because we're on Kaching Maze and Kaching. Yeah, anyways. Um, oh, no. Xiangling just oh, because. No, of no, no. Pyro NATO. <laughs> right, I, that's the, the only reason why, because Xiangling is Pyro NATO for both DPS and um, like team building compositions, is, is very versatile. Um, and then Kozla, because Kozla. It was just because Kazuma. I'm actually. There's I, a, I think I'm probably biased towards Kazuma. Yeah, there's actually a couple of interesting questions I want to ask. But the first one I want to ask is, do you know this is specific to slice? Do you know off your head how much better is Kazuma compared to like say Sucrose, like number wise? I'm curious. At C six, right? C six. C zero. Sorry, C zero. Let's say C zero yeah. Kazuma versus uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh. Sir, at, six, six, well. Depending on the elemental mastery of Kazuha, like let's just say Kazuha was like 800 EM, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's only 12%. In favor of Kazuha or Sucrose? In favor of Kazuha, right? Because Sucrose is 20% for the Ellie absorbed on right. C6. I, I think it's about there, but only if you double but Sora. But the thing is, I think that um, Sucrose's C6 is tied to her burst, right? Right. You have Whereas to Kazuha is always. every 5, 6 seconds, depending on whether you have C0 or C1. So that's the only... I, I I value that a lot. I value the timing of Kazuo's E and how how much impact his E can have in a short oh, amount yeah. of... In a short Ka amount Kazuo's of time. burst is basically just damage. It's... It's not... It's not... It's not useful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, when, when we talk about Kazuo, it's literally just his E potential, right? His grouping mm -hmm. with his E and, like, all the buffs and debuffs that it applies with the artifact set. I think the burst, it, there are two uses for the burst that I think his E does not cover. I guess it's kind of the same use, which is just elemental application. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's true. Like, for example, if you've ever played Mel Ganyu with Kazuo, you need the Pyro from Kazuo. Yeah. Um, but Mel Ganyu is the only yeah. comp in which the elemental application is I think there's because one. it's elemental I, application. The I other ones are just, it's just for the damage. Right. Yeah, but that's just for the damage. Because yeah. it right. no, damage. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's overload mm -hmm. with Raiden. Um, but that's important though, because I don't want people there. not to use Kazuo's burst anymore, right? We don't want people to oh, not yeah, use Kazuo's burst. It's sure. really, really, yeah, really yeah, important yeah. to use it's his burst. Strong. It's very strong. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a lot of It, it depends. The, in child comps, there are situations where you don't use it. Yeah. I mean, who's, all of Hu Chao's comps now, like, or not all. You know, I feel like I'm probably going to get flame for not putting Bennett in those three. But I'm gonna stick by my choice. I mean, I'm gonna. We'll, I'm, we'll I'm talk gonna about it. I respect the choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 
Go I on. don't. Before, <laughs> yeah, let me finish real quick, and then I'll just I'll be quiet. Yeah. I promise. Um, I so one thing about Kazu is that his priority actually has been raising recently because Jace turns found like a bunch of new rotations for Hu Tao. Um, mm -hmm. You're Ooh. able to swirl Hydro and Pyro for the Beardus and Venner and get the damage bonus on your Xingqiu and your Hu Tao. So yeah, have you seen his makes... uh, his Toma rotation? Mm -hmm. They're very, very, very strong. Like very, all... very strong. Yeah. Very They're also incredibly unreliable, though, which I think yeah. is it's very like the, the 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 biggest problem with the rotation is that it relies on uh, collision hydro application. Yeah, that, I think the only way that's possible is Xing Chou, right? I mean, like that's it's. Well, yeah, that's easy to do for, for a not min max player. Probably yeah, not. this is no. the point I want I mean, to bring like, up is that <laughs> Hu Tao is pretty mid max. <laughs> yeah, this is the point I want to bring up is that I think Kazuma depth is a lot deeper than what most people are thinking, especially with the double swirl, which is what Artisan is trying to mention. Is that there? You have to, in order to get value out of Kazuma, you actually have to do very very specific rotation to do double swirling. And I feel like a lot of people are still not aware of that. It's the thing. So I was curious if uh oh, my my Sarah died. Like as mentioned, I think I don't actually know the rotation off my head for Hu Tao, but it's a very specific rotation that lets you do it. And if you screw it up, it's. I think if you screw it up, it's arguably not as good as Sucrose. I don't know if anyone can confirm. Um. I think I've been. I think it, it really depends on the situation you're in because in AoE generally Kazuha's burst does represent a pretty significant damage source. Mm -hmm. And like if on top of that you're a Hu Tao comp that's mostly single target and you're in an AoE you're in AoE content, then Kazuha should edge out above Sucrose. But like, yeah, there's definitely a lot of situations where um if you don't do the um the double the double swirl setups, then there's not much of a point to playing Kazuha over Sucrose. Yeah, so I these are. One... Oh, I was just going to quickly say. So these are the difference between casual player perception of a character versus a free crafty character perception of a character, right? Because we talk about these complex rotation that we assume you are probably doing to get the value of the characters, but casual player might not be aware of that, or even if they're aware, they not might not necessarily have the capability of doing that and in that case their value of the character will be a lot different right like for child for example you have like with polar star it's like en1c bennett q kazua q or kazua holdy kazua q whatever like it's a very long rotation um i think that kazu kazua still does a lot of he still does add a lot of value um, just because pure damage on his burst, especially if you can chain react it, uh, where you like swirl an element, um, and then the swirled element causes some sort of additional reaction because then the swirl both benefits from Kazuo's EM, plus the reaction, the chain reaction caused by the swirl benefits uh, from EM. I think the main problem with that is most of the time people don't really play Kazuha in electro charge comps. They play him in vapor mouth comps. Yeah, which and then the the those chain reactions just end up stealing your vapes instead of actually helping you and right, making which you is, lose damage. Yeah, which yeah. is a huge mistake in my opinion. TF Kazuha, um, EC mm. like Kazuha Venti mm. Barbara official such a good mm. call. Uh, yeah. yeah, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, I mean, we can look back to uh, Bennett here. Um, I don't think you'll get really flamed because, like, saying Kazuha, I mean, if we expanded the list from three to like five or six, Kazuha ends up in it like very easily. Um, mm -hmm. Zhang Ling ends up in it very easily. Beto and Be Bennett fight over these slots a lot. Um, and those are generally the units that like theory crafters actually think are the like kind of the strongest in the game right now. Um, and, and it's not because like Bennett's a healer or anything, actually. It's just straight up just his attack. That's it. The attack bonus on Bennett is just incredible, yeah. like as a support. And then in a DPS role, we have like Four Thundering Fury Bennett, um, which is very useful against things like um, Heralds. Or is it the Heralds? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Lecter yeah, or Herald, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. It's also strong as a carry. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is the Jeff guy. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, mean, I am, after all, writer of the Bennett guy, Don Kutzing Vance. Which is getting updated, by the way. A bunch of stuff in there is updated. It hasn't been, up it hasn't been updated since, like, I, uh, Rosaria released. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, yeah, like, Bennett adds, like, 80% to your, like, 80% damage, just straight yeah. up, <laughs> uh, to your units. And that's Plus honestly, 80%. like... Yeah, it, like for Xiaoling, I remember calculating it to be around 80%. Mm -hmm. um, it might be slightly different from other, for other units, but it's just such a massive attack buff. Um, plus energy, plus like so many other factors that just make Bennett great. Um, healing is definitely like a nice thing to have, but right. it's honestly not a particularly big part of Bennett's kit, and he would still be like just as or probably not just as good, but still like definitely very, very up there. Uh, even I mean, I healing. I consider Bennett to be the best unit in the game by so far that even if he didn't heal, I'd still probably consider him the best unit in the game. Damn, <laughs> Zajif, the big Bennett salesman. Bennett salesman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but am I You're wrong? You're talking though? to the writer of the Bennett guide on the PC <laughs> Main's website. The renowned oh, Zajif77. True, true. <laughs> But yeah, like I've I've been playing comps without healers for a long while because I didn't have Bennett on on my free to play account and I was trying to push Abyss as much as I could. So I've been playing like two sides with. Well, technically I have a level twenty Kokomi, but that doesn't count. She doesn't. Heal. <laughs> All right, Kokomi does not heal that much at low investment. Chi Chi is basically the only heal. Chi Chi and Bennett are the only two healers that can heal a lot at low investment. Anyways, so I've been playing comps with basically no healer. And, like, I haven't had a problem that much with it. But, like, Bennett is just... Even even when you play comps without healers, you still want Bennett. He's just too fucking good. Yeah, I don't disagree. I do not disagree. Bennett, I mean, do you have any other questions about, like, why, like, theory crafters might rate units, like way way higher in like certain positions than others i mean um there i mean there really is like a disconnect between not just like you and us but like casual players and like players who are at the end of the game units like beto bennett child and like all the other carries they didn't end up being like in the meta because like we liked them they ended up in the meta because we found out like eventually yeah, oh wait, hang on a second. If we actually throw unit like throw artifacts on them instead of throwing all our stuff on Deluke, they actually do way more damage. <laughs> yep. Well, he, why you gotta throw Deluke under the bus, man? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Deluke is still nice, but tiled, man. Yeah. But now Deluke, Deluke is a good example because like <clears throat> he's he's the character that everyone thought was like the best carry in the game at the start. Mm. But like with hindsight, holy fuck was he not? He was so far from being the best character in the game. <laughs> he was very existed. far. Yeah. I don't know if like, you guys have seen it. Oh, finish it. Sorry. But yeah, and, and, and it's not... Like, I, I see a lot of people using, like, Diluc not really being in the meta anymore as evidence that the game is being power crept. But it's not power creep. It's just people understanding the game more, right? If we understood the but game as much it. back then as we do now, Diluc would have never been the premier carry it's unfortunate there's actually a i was gonna mention there's this chinese have a chinese content have like a song like community based off about the luke and it was like how the luke has been like abandoned by people like people took an auto fucking weapon and that video have <laughs> six million view on it oh like, god <laughs> r.i.p to luke yeah there's a chinese really? song about the luke is outdated and there's six million view on it but yeah, I mean, on the other hand, I don't think that, like, he's just bad now. No, it's he's not just, bad. Yeah. It, it's more that, like, I mean, this is something that I talked about last time. I think people tend to over-exaggerate the gaps between different teams and different units. They're honestly mm -hmm. not, like, that far apart. It's just, like, yeah, we, we had Xiangling, but we did not think to use her. Because mm -hmm. free character yeah. equals bad, right? I, I think the biggest problem with the Luke is that 
in AoE, he's weaker than Cheng Ling, and in single target, he's weaker than Hu Tao. Both by a pretty significant amount. Oh, you can and because of that, people just... single target too. <laughs> then Cheng Ling. Mm. Oh yeah, he's also weaker than Cheng Ling in single target, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, because of that, he doesn't have a, a niche where he's a 5-star unit that's the best at something. Which, for a 5-star unit, to most players, is like, kind of a yikes, you know? <laughs> Jay just typed in the chat. You see the most recent Abyss website stats. The reporting Duluth usage is lower than pitching. I think so. <laughs> pitching oh. means have, we have finally achieved our goal of making pitching more used than Duluth. Yeah, except we found that C2 <laughs> bug. <laughs> Yeah. Um. On that topic, actually, because we we're talking about how Spearcrafter might rate some character higher than people normally think. Um. I also want to talk about the opposite and how Spearcrafter might rate character lower than what people often think. And the one coming in my mind immediately is actually Zhongli. I don't know, people. I don't know where mm -hmm. people think Zhongli is right now, but I actually oh, think no, not the single. <laughs> Zhongli <laughs> no. is in in Spearcrafter's perspective, Zhongli is actually not that good. I think. I think the the one of the main reasons for the divide is that theory crafters just actually have late game content, and that late game content is theory crafting. Like in general, a theory crafter will spend more time thinking about the game than a casual player, and in that time, they'll I mean they'll have more time to learn enemy attack patterns. And when you know the enemy attack patterns, John Lee loses a lot of his usefulness. He's still a good unit, but a lot of his value is lost when you when you understand the enemy's attack patterns well. I actually want to start here by hearing Slice thought about John Lee real quick. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, so uh, John Lee has a like a specific place in my opinion, right? Um, he's at that he's yeah, at that trash. middle mid game mid game ground where he assists players in learning about stuff, right? But he doesn't help when you reach endgame, right? So like, mm -hmm. he's he's kind of like, he's kind of like your parents before you go to college and get a job, right? Does that make sense? Like, they no, assist you by raising you, but then once, you, right once you're at that stage, you don't like, you know, like, he's still there, right? He's still shielding you, still protecting you, but... He doesn't maximize your value. Mm. Yeah, I guess that does make sense. Um, <laughs> the way that I view Zhongli is just, there is always like an opportunity cost of using Zhongli. And people will say like, yeah, he has the 20% shred, but you're losing like maybe, who are you using Zhongli instead of? Are you using Zhongli instead of Kazua? And are you using Zhongli instead of Bennett? Who would both provide like bigger boosts to your team than 20% shred? Um, and while yeah, it's true, especially for early game players who are who are learning, it's just like he just becomes outdated as soon as you know how to dodge well. Yeah, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I will always have a special place for John Lee though because he mine rocks really well. That is true, but you uh, know what? Uh, I play Razor and I mean Razor, and he yeah, does the yeah, exact same thing, so too, I don't need John Lee. Yeah, there's all these holdy <laughs> characters and their mining capability. <laughs> All right, but I get to hear this guy talk about his Menthus wine all the time, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think John Lee is a classical example of a trap, to be honest, and he's classified as a win more character. I don't know if that terminology is familiar with a lot of people. I wouldn't call yeah. it a trap, right? I think. But would you I, say? So, oh, so this sorry. is where, like, yeah, yeah. So this is where, like, the the conception is a little warped, and I don't want it to, like. You know, John, John Lee is one of those units that is, that allows people to play lazy, and that's actually a really important thing. Don't want to don't want to discredit lazy play. Why? It's actually fun. Lazy <laughs> lazy play without maximizing stuff is also fun, right? Like people don't like to be slapped around all the time, and if they don't have to invest that much brain power into it, um, it actually benefits those those people. Uh, so. Like he's not a trap. I, I wouldn't say he's a trap because also there's a lot of players that were introduced in the in the in the most recent six months of the game. Now not since the beginning of the game. If if uh, you've been playing since the beginning of the game, then there's there's much less reason, right? Like there's much less reason to use him. But 
even even now when you just want to veg and have a chill time Johnny's there for you to to cook up a nice jade shield and you know just walk around everything so i, I do <laughs> use Johnny and albedo in overworld all the time i'm actually that eating Johnny right now when i say it <laughs> but, <laughs> no, so, Johnny is a trap yeah, also is currently playing i just want to clarify real quick <laughs> what's up when what does win more mean for the people who don't understand it and basically a lot of people always see win more stuff not necessarily in genshin but they always look at win more stuff and they look at how it win do more and think it's really good when in reality it's not uh so win more mean that if you're already winning the game you you win more and that's what win more mean so for john lee it mean like if you are already beating the abyss you'll be able to beat the abyss easier because again as mentioned he lets you turn your brain off right so it's like you're still beating the abyss but now with your brain off instead of on the you know, it's, it's nice yeah the opposite mm -hmm. of the spectrum is that if you're not winning to begin with, he does not win you the game. Like if you're not clearing the oh, yeah, abyss yeah. with Jolly, or if you're not clearing the abyss, Jolly is not gonna clear the abyss. So you come into this situation where you're either not clearing the abyss and Jolly is not gonna help you, or you are already clearing the abyss and you don't care too much to have Jolly, except for the fact that if you really want to turn your brain off, which is the the thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I like classifying him as a win more. He re he really does feel like that, or like. You you have to be winning in the first place. You have to already. He like takes the, the the skill element out of the equation to some extent, but you still need to like have the DPS to clear already before him, because he's not really increasing your DPS. Yeah, that's that's accurate. So in my opinion, I don't mind. Only, I wouldn't rate him like super high. He's, he would be like completely out of like, if I had to rank units, he would like be outside. The value of him is like solely dependent on how much effort you want to put in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, effort <laughs> And it scales up and down depending how you go. Um, and like the most important thing about him, in my opinion, is that if you play on mobile, if you don't have a strong <laughs> it is very hard very hard to play certain team compositions that make you that are like exposed to like um like cc units like yo -E mio or like um like in my opinion hu tao on mobile um zhao and ganyu they're very very difficult to play without zhongli in this case um and in terms of again in terms of like in relation to theorycraft it's very hard to quantify this and it's Quite often like kind of looked at in a poor light but in general like i don't think anyone would re ever really refute the statement like yeah if you want to play super lazily or like you just want to play on mobile Bojongli. yeah yeah and i think that um you know because because we're talking about theory crafting right and like <laughs> what i said actually goes against right the entire discussion but i still think it's worth mentioning um only because like it's it's more of universal ground than anything but once you add into maximizing the skill equation into it then you minus the john lee from the equation so adding in skill i mean or adding in a computer <laughs> i mean i mean the, the idea of like making it easier for yourself like it it it, it is also part of theory drafting Oh god, do we want to talk about sense, though, right? mechanics for your crafting? Yeah, that's fair. I do feel like it is something that everyone overlooks. I don't think I've ever seen people talk about like how easily you can clear content as something that we should consider in TC. Oh. Like, well, I mean, like we talk about it sometimes. It's just, I mean, not as often as like other topics. I think. I mean, um, especially with Hu Tao, we do a lot. I do. We do for Hu, we do for Hu Tao, but I don't think like for other and for like, child in general, as well for just, rotation, yeah. rotational difficulty on child. Wait, you don't think jet? You don't think jet plunging shower of collision in, on the eleven is hard? Me? I don't yeah. have Xiao, so I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? Jet plunging with collision plunge beam shower uh, on slice <laughs> on Xiao. <laughs> are you talking about the double plunge hit hitting the head? Yes, but also the uh, charge attack jump cancel on top of that. So the best way to do damage. Yes, but I think the way you said it kind of like way too dang for me. But I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's that's the point. Um, 
I mean, it, it wraps around again, like what XLI said at the beginning, that like, it's it's a hard balance to find, like, um, and units like Hu Tao specifically, it's just, sometimes we might go a little too far in terms of like, um, how many things that we really consider. Um, it's just way too dank. Like, for Hu Tao specifically, I'm not too sure if you're very aware, but like, when theory crafters talk about Hu Tao these days, like, um, it's like a bag of worms. It really is. You open up Pandora's box to <laughs> literally, like, she could look, she could very easily be worse than Deluke or the best single target damage in the game. It's just, it's just how it is with her. Um, and to explain why, it would take like 20 minutes. That's how, like, complicated I mean, it is. TLDR, she's hard to play. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's the TLDR. She she's a lot harder to play than people think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like as an example, um, I think there are two people in the entirety of Kitsing mains who have managed to do C zero Hu Tao's optimal combo. Two people out of the ninety thousand. So one of them was believe like, it. <laughs> one of them was doing I, it on a PS4, it's by the way. Fuck. One of them doing it on a PS4 yeah. or five. I don't know which everyone he has. I mean, uh, it, it was Lax and NZ. Wait, um, but someone yeah, in chat is saying. Yeah, so oh, wait, I'm trying to say, that's why everyone wants her C1. That's not the case, actually. Because when you get C1, her optimal combo is even more difficult. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it becomes even more intensive than it would it is at C0. Um, just because you remove the stamina constraint doesn't mean that it gets easier. You actually do a harder combo. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's you just move to dash and swing. So, yeah, that's the thing. That's the, but that's the, the, the C1 thing, does make her easier to play, but it's not directly from the combo it's from the stamina yeah, management yeah. yeah that's the interesting part isn't it like for for theory crafters specifically hu tao becomes a unit that is very polarizing it is very hard for us to say to recommend hu tao in one hand because we know like her upper limit but as a casual player we can't expect them to learn any of these like mm -hmm. any of the, the combos mm -hmm. that we're talking about so what's the yeah, balance like then right Right when 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 guide makers try to do this, then what's the balance? Because I would probably completely avoid trying to get into that. Because I would probably ask you guys for assistance, because I can't do any of that. I can't do the most difficult part of Hu Tao it, it, to to maximize her DPS. I don't have like the mechanical skill to do it. I think, as much as it sucks, you just have to, at like, at least mention, mention the it. caveats. Mention it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Like, as much as it sucks, because, like, I, I know how long guides can get. And, like, having to add shit in them. Like, m losing losing uh, viewer retention. Making the, the video more intimidating. Like, I, I know that, like, it doesn't feel good to do. But I, I don't think there's really much else to do. I, th I, think I mean, I think it has to be mentioned, only... right? In, in order yeah. to be, like, a complete credible source, it needs to be mentioned because... Uh, those players who really want to main her um, are interested in, like, you know, actually being high APM gameplay. So, the high APM, you have to change your FPS to 30 in order to have the call. Oh, yeah, changing your, yeah, you have to change your <laughs> FPS to 30 so you get more frame per second. So, you get more hit lag extension. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But, yeah, I guess, like, it's just hard. We've also had this dilemma with the kqm youtube like once when we were back doing the clee guides we were like what kind of clee walk cancels should we include should we include like these cancels or these cancels same with the hu tao guide it's like should we include um some of her like more difficult to play teams uh like her, theoretically her highest damage ceiling is a team where you use amber and kazua amber to apply pyro and Kazuo to swirl the pyro because Hu Tao can't apply pyro by herself without activating her skill. I mean, if you activate your skill in order to apply pyro and then you swirl pyro with Kazuo, then you don't have your skill up. So it's just difficult um, to like say what's the bright line because none of us theory crafter like ninety percent of the discussion for Hu Tao, for example, or like at least eighty whatever, uh, is like how far can we push Hu Tao? How many? and two c's can we do on c0 or at c1 it's less like we we do talk about like yes these are very hard 
But I don't think of the conversation of what should we expect a casual player to be able to do is a topic that really comes up that often, which just makes it really difficult to say like, well, what do we recommend? Because we don't know how good casual players are at the game. We don't know how well they can play, how not well they can play. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, is, it really it comes very down to the spacing, right? Because most of most of like Hu Tao's complication when it comes to the divide between casual player and really hardcore is how well you can react to the amount of frames between per kit. So, like you can just do N1C, which is really simple, and you can like autopilot that. But then your stamina is completely gone, and it's about like sixty percent of the actual like optimal damage. So like. It, it it's so it's so hard when it comes to her that like I kinda just wanna take the easy way out sometimes, but <laughs> Yep. Play so, Shang Ling. <laughs> play Shang Ling. That's it, I don't know, that is the easy way out, to be honest. That's one of the bigger reasons why I recommend Shang Ling. It it is the easy way though. <laughs> and it's good enough most of the time. <laughs> Shang Ling sales, <laughs> man. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. We are all selling salesmen here. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I, mean, I don't think no. you can be a theory crafter without being a selling salesman. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually so bad right now because the everyone, like, we all get this question which one should I pull for a child or who's. Oh, we did before, like, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And that is one of. That might be one of the most difficult questions to answer in the game. <laughs> In terms of like rec pull recommendations, at least um, how much information you have to parse through. Mm. Um, and I mean, the last question is really just about like meta slaves versus waifu enjoyers. I mean, kind of tangential to what we were already talking about. It's like, why is the community so divided? Are the reputations that theory crafters or or waifu enjoyers like? Do, is each side do the reputations that each side? Get are they fair? Um, what do casual players care about in their gameplay? It's, it's hard to it's hard to talk about these things. Um, I think the the biggest thing about that is nobody gives a fuck about waifu versus meta, apart from the kind of people that would kind of not really fit into either category because they're just confrontational dicks that want to create problems everywhere. <laughs> Oh, I, guess that's I think wrong. most people aren't gonna fucking tell you how to play. They're just gonna be like, I play the game like this, very cool, pog champ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as a good example, <laughs> like half the uh half the TC staff at KQM are like not playing meta teams necessarily. Mono plays Noel. I play Razor. Um those are not like Dude. Maybe Noel is more meta than Razor. Honestly, TF but... Kazuha enjoyers. <laughs> yeah, but like, my I play over self overloading Razor. That is not Dude, a meta that... composition. I played that as well. It's really fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's definitely not meta. I I also have played uh, double animo Razor Dragon Strike, where I only go for Dragon Strikes on N ones. That's not very meta either. But like a large portion of the TC staff at KQM. Like, we're not people who really would fit into either category, as you said. Like, yes, we talk about meta, we figure out what the meta is, we do the calculations. But it's also like, we, we just let people play what they want. Um, you, can, you can do whatever you want, we do whatever we want. And I think that's just a misconception that people hold, that people who come up with the meta are necessarily people who are forcing the meta upon others. And more often than not, or I guess like, all the time, actually. It's generally people who take the words of theory crafters and then weaponize yeah. it, not yeah. the theory crafters themselves pushing that sort of narrative. Which is like, it's it's hard to say because like in some in some way, technically yes, we are responsible for that by saying like X character deals more damage or is more meta than Y character. But on the other hand, like, I I don't want to say like it's not our fault because it kind of is in some sense, but also like we're trying not to actively push that narrative. Yeah, and also just like the, 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 the question isn't like, 
is it our fault or not is is that an accurate representation of theory crafters and it's it's fucking not right that's true agreed <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just like sitting because I'm I'm like thinking about it, right? Um, I don't think the community is really so divided. I just think it's a select few vocal minority, right? Mm -hmm. That are like they're loud, right? The select the select few vocal minority that are loud. That's what people are like. Okay, like bro, who? Because 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 why the <laughs> fuck would you be loud about people are not angry at each other? Like yeah, exactly. That's, are you gonna yell that? Right? <laughs> Obviously not. So the only people that you hear are the people that are angry at each other. But yeah, sorry, keep going. Yeah, it's just like it's just like you know the the the, the stray hairs that, um, for some reason, unintentionally or intentionally start a fight about it, but I don't think they intended to. Um, and then people are, people from both sides are usually like, okay, but like I don't think anyone actually like cares about that, right? Because I think most. Most uh, waifu enjoyer players understand that there is like a, you know, if you want to optimize your gameplay, you can go be a meta slave, right? And the meta slave, and the meta slave people are actually like probably the community that more understands waifu enjoyers because they probably were one before they went to meta slave to actually like not be face slamming their keyboard while trying to clear the abyss. Dafu and yeah, I guess that's true. That's all. <laughs> Everyone um, talking about how they don't play meta, and the only thing I play is Morgana. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just can't play me. Then, then, but I, that's just because you're too bad at the game to play something I else mean, and still clear. Damn. I, no, I'm, I, no out. I actually want to bring that out. It's uh, I don't actually disagree with what Sajana said, and what I, it's what I want to like to say. It's like, do you guys think meta is necessary, especially with? I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but especially with Abyss getting harder and harder i think it's it's starting to become closer to like it. i want to yeah. know like if, if because let me put it this way if meta is not required or necessary at all why do people ever care about meta right which is a really common take from people who dislike about meta it's like why do you care about meta you can clear the game with anything but so the question i want to ask is is meta necessary uh I'll take given that you want to clear the abyss, obviously, because if you don't want to clear abyss, then it's probably not necessary. Uh, but you know, like, yeah, I am you not very good at the game. Or? Huh? No, I'm just asking, asking for everyone. I am asking uh, pretty much everyone, because I guess we can I start with Mister Slice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can get my take on it. So, I think it's the choice of wording that really matters here. I think meta is healthy, no matter what game it is. I think meta is very, very healthy. Because it gives structure to to gameplay um, for a lot of people that are entering the game, um, and it also assists with game design in the longer term. And also, probably is the intention behind designers is that they are trying to categorize certain characters as such, right? And this causes compositions to form, right? And that causes meta to happen. So I think meta is healthy, and because Abyss is getting harder, I think it's becoming more prominently pushed, right? So meta has always existed. Um, it's just that beginning of Genshin, people were stupid. They didn't understand what the meta was in the game. And then it, mm -hmm. like people started doing the math for it, figuring out what the meta actually was, right? Then we have all the characters that you know prop up, and everyone's using those characters. And then everyone's clearing Abyss really quickly, and people go back to playing the characters that they enjoy. Now Abyss is getting annoyingly more HP based, right? We actually have to do X amount of damage in a certain amount of time to be able to clear at the fastest pace. This is where meta is again pushed up, right? It's always been there, but it's depending on how much priority people give it, it depends on the content. Yeah, so it's kind of like a dialectic, I guess, where you have... <laughs> I guess right. that might, might be way too dank for, for here, but it's like you have the one side where it's like, the abyss is steadily getting more difficult and you are getting past those checks and then you go back to not playing meta and then you have to meet those checks again to go back to meta, etc. I think that my take on it is there is diminishing returns in terms of investment because you can always spend more and more resin on artifacts, but the quality of your artifacts that you get, like the quality increase that you get from a certain amount of resin is always going to be diminishing because like mm -hmm. it's very easy to go from zero to 20 crit value like very hard to go from like like 30 to 50 crit value 
Yeah. You're hurting me, man. Yeah. Hurting and me. like, hmm? you're hurting me. Minus ten dollars <laughs> a day for resin refresh, which is basically zero gain. <laughs> I have zero fifty crit value pieces. Uh, but yeah. So like, the amount of investment that you need is just always going to increase. And it's just a question of is the abyss difficulty scaling similarly to the way that your artifact investment is slowing down? But I haven't looked at the HP thresholds. This is probably a it side is of thing, bad. It is very it is, bad. It seems to be increasing faster. The abyss difficulty seems to be increasing faster than endgame players can invest into non-meta units, which forces them to go back to meta. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you look at strict HP values, let, let me get my let me get my chart out real quick. Um, you should take a look, look at it for twelve three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. let me. Uh, I can share my screen. And, and before the next abyss get harder again, and then we're like, uh oh. Mm. So, <laughs> I can fill it in while Tad just looking for the stuff. So, got it. Basically, like one of the things about this is like it's not just about the HP anymore. It's about splitting up that HP and putting it into different waves. It's becoming mm -hmm. like oh, way, yeah. way prohibitively difficult for players to dump like their resin into units that they actually enjoy instead of you know yeah you're gonna have to put more points into your shangling homie i don't care if you hate using her it's the <laughs> only way you're gonna you know? so yeah it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth in general mm -hmm. okay, so <laughs> i have it right here i can get can you guys see oh i'm yep yep, yep. okay so the, the first table is uh, basically like single target HP. So no, sorry, the AOE HP. So like if if you're hitting all of the enemy, if your AOE ability, no, sorry. If there's like two enemies that have the same HP, then that HP is only going to get counted once if they spawn at the same time, right? So the, this is like basically looking at how much, um, how much damage you need if your team is AOE, right? If all of your skills and bursts and normal attacks always hit every enemy this is the dps you need and the second one is if you um if you're only hitting enemies individually Sandra, can you just take a screenshot of it real quick yeah i have no pixels i have no pixels yeah. on your stream it's, it's very it's deep really, right now. it's really really sure. crunchy <laughs> sure 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 pixels mod check <laughs> my bad <laughs> It's fine. We can see the colors. We can see it goes from green to red. I was like, that's, that's actually scary seeing the current one is single target base is 6 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so rough. yeah. So if, if you have only only single target damage, you have to do 6 million. If you have, if everything you do always hits every enemy in AoE, it's 2.6 million. Mm. But the thing is, this is not realistic. This is never happening because... Right. The enemies are never getting grouped perfectly, and if the, even if they are, it's really unlikely that your whole team is hitting every single enemy at once. Doritos. Right? If, Let's... Doritos. Like, usually, yeah, especially for the Doritos, right? Usually for the Doritos, what you end up doing is you kill one Dorito with the Ruin Guard, and then the second Dorito with the Ruin Guard, right? <laughs> well, that, that adds 400,000 HP. I hope everyone knows what the Doritos are. Fucking... Let's not forget them teleporting so yeah. that you have to shave off time and mm. run to it. And if you're using a unit like Utah, that's less downtime for you to be doing damage. Yep. It's pretty horrible. And even um, if, even if you don't look at that, in both categories, it is tankier than it's ever been before, apart from PMA if you have a like single target only team. Mm -hmm. uh, an AoE team, right? If you if you're if you're trying to do PMA with with an AOE team versus current abyss with an AOE team, and you somehow manage to get perfect RNG on the AOE team, uh, the current abyss should be slightly easier. But outside of that, it's just strictly harder. If you look at the total HP, so if you only have single target, it's like 50% harder than it's ever been before. PMA is per perpetual mechanical array, the big uh. fucker. Well, I want to think about it as a positive mental attitude, but that's definitely <laughs> not for the, for the for the array. It's it's just. I wish I had a positive mental attitude towards you. I was gonna like, say, wait, is this supposed to be a positive abyss? <laughs> what? To put a lot of this into like perspective, Azel, like, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you have like 60 crit rate, 120 crit damage on all of your units, and you use most team comps, 
hover around like what 25,000 20,000 the Luke vape is 25k uh, average yeah. investment so and then the best teams in the game with like no mistakes or errors with 100% of time they're like 30 something thousand like the best ones um yeah and this I think is with national 60... is 32k or something yeah so 60 crit rate 120 crit damage on every single one of your units mm -hmm. you're not you are not clearing this abyss if you're doing single target only right so like just to characterize this your units like your investment barrier is getting higher and higher I just want yeah. to clarify like, this. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I want to call this out real quick, especially for Slice who probably doesn't know. But 60, 120 is how we classify as an average character. Like, we did kind of like some calculation to see like how uh, out of fact role will go, and we end up settling on like, yeah. like if you have 60, 120, that's like plus pretty good. 55 plus 70. Yeah, that's yeah. like pretty well, good. Yeah, yeah, plus 55 plus 70 because crit ascensions, yeah. and sometimes you have like crit weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, like, 60, 120 is plus 55 yeah. plus 70, that's fine. Yeah. So, like, that's the but point honestly, where it's good enough, and really, it's a lot harder to get better than that. Or not a lot harder, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's hard. It's definitely not resident. I mean, it is still resident efficient, but not. Oh, he broke. Yeah. Resident efficiency is just very difficult to calculate. Especially for like artifacts, because you have the question of like, yeah, technically it's not resin efficient to farm artifacts, but you can take your artifacts and put them on other characters without needing to refarm them. But you mm -hmm. can't take talent levels and put them on other characters. Yeah. So it's just always like that was an account enough. view versus like a single character view, whatever. It's yeah. just resin math is hard. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like when, when I when I first did this sheet, I realized that they really are doing it intentionally because there is no way these first three abysses were unintentional. That they have the exact same HP. Oh, let me pull it back up. For yeah, the people. like that. That's that's not possible. Yeah, I, I know. I... Like th th that 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 does not happen by accident. That's not a coincidence. They know what they're doing. They started by balancing it out based on the first one, and then they just thought because they were like, you know what, you know what. You, you, you know how we could make a lot of money, guys? We could make we can make players struggle and make them feel like shit. Yo, that's a good idea. I love it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. part of it is like on one hand you have like progression, right? It mm -hmm. feel equally it feel equally pretty bad if the abyss didn't continuously scale. Where like, okay, well, <laughs> by Venti charge attacks are currently one shotting these for two agents. This is sick, <laughs> and the, like you know, like it has to progress, obviously. But we're getting to the point where, like, if a player starts late, there's almost there's very little they can do besides the meta to catch up and clear the abyss. Yeah, and like all, I mean, of course, we have to say, yeah, you don't have to clear the abyss. It's optional. It doesn't really give you that much. It's all that, but it is still the end game. It's the one thing that's consistent. Um, and like on top of that, I mean, it's part of the business model in general. It's hard to get like 20% damage increases from your artifacts when you're at the end. But you know what else can give you a 20% damage increase at the end? <laughs> Stop a whole lot. Getting five star weapons, weapons, you know. Yeah, getting you know. Weapons. That's yeah. a 30% damage increase in some st instances. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I like... mean, it... no. Yeah, I think that's also like. That, that's also kind of the trap, I guess. I don't really want to call it a trap, honestly. Um, but, like, Millennial Weapons. Um, I think I was talking to XF3, who's one of the other theory crafters in KQM. And Millennial Weapons are very nice for pushing damage ceilings. Because they just give you extra buffs once you have them. But, like, if you don't have, like, if you don't have them... It's just like your damage is limited at some instance. So rolling for those five star weapons allows you to break some sort of ceiling that you weren't able to before, which is like very necessary. And it can feel or at least it can feel very necessary to players where they're like, I am like 10 seconds off of clearing abyss. I need to increase my damage by this much and I'm not doing it right now. What do I need? I need to roll for a weapon. I need to roll for those extra constellations, which I guess you can say, I mean, I guess it is pretty predatory. I mean, yeah. C2 Raiden, C3 Raiden, yeah. <laughs> um, you have 
the Staff of Homa, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, you have Jade Cutter and you have Mist Splitter. These are the types of like, these are like flat damage increases, right? Over like their four star equivalents. There's, it is like an insurmountable like distance to catch up to players who have these five star weapons. And they see like these showcases on YouTube and we don't do it intentionally, of course, like that, but we do these showcases where our units hit a lot higher a lot higher, right? There's a difference between seeing a Shangling do a 12,000 vaporize. Yeah, that's cool. That's really high. And there's a difference between seeing a Shangling do 120,000 damage per per power mm -hmm. spin, right? And that is not a di that's not a difference that you can make up with just resin investment without like dumping everything you have into it. Um, Quick and weapons like Homa make up the. <laughs> Weapons like Homa make up the difference very, very hard. Yeah. And I mean, if if you don't think this is real, like think about Ganyu. When Ganyu gets rerun, and she will get rerun with Amos, how many of you guys are thinking in the chat about pulling for the Amos bro? Oh, people are already how thinking about how pulling for Homa. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you guys are thinking about pulling Homa for a Hu Tao? A lot of you are. This is yeah, um, one thing I, I think. You can go, Tenten. Okay, well, I was or gonna go. circle back to yeah. the very beginning of the podcast. This is why, I, I, for oh, me you're personally, going to circle back, I'm going. Well, yeah, you can, I was gonna say you can go. It's not fair. Okay, yeah. Um, one thing that I just wanted to mention, just because Art, you were talking about like resin investment, right? One really interesting thing that we did in KQM a while back was we checked people's theoretical damage on their Hu Taos, and we had like, um. We, we saw the difference between like the most invested Hu Tao and the least invested Hu Tao. It was in terms of just your artifact stats, because we equalized everything else out. We said, you will have the same weapon, you all have the same talent levels, you have the same buffs. The only thing that changes is your artifacts. And then we just used the Genshin Optimizer to see what is the difference in damage. The worst invested Hu Tao dealt about, or the best invested Hu Tao dealt about 30% more damage than the worst invested Hu Tao. You know what else is a 30% damage difference? Staff of Homa. Literally, Staff of Homa <laughs> is the same damage difference as like the worst versus the best invested Hu Tao on the KQM theory crafting poll. Of course, like these are among theory crafters who have been playing the game for a while. Like there's probably a bigger res resin difference between like very beginner players and very end game players, but that just goes to show how strong weapons are compared to resin investment. Dead. We That's actually why... have a. Uh... A same comparison for Shanling right now. So if you guys are in the KQM channel, you should go submit your Shanling data and we can check out the difference <laughs> between like a really invested Shanling and a not very invested Shanling. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to circle back was the very beginning of the podcast. Cause for kind of for me personally, but like I talked about how my main focus is like if I, I'm like it's just very it made me very sad seeing people pulling for characters and then they can like make it work because the character might have issues and then they're like okay you know i want to make this character work so so i'm gonna pull for their weapon in order to make it work and even then that might not necessarily work right it's like oh my character is not doing enough damage i'm gonna go spend 200 dollars or 300 dollars to pull for their weapon maybe their constellation and it, it just made me very sad but like um you know like it, it people are dumping their money and i don't like seeing that I, I really don't like seeing that that people are just dumping their money because they got baited I mean, we're reaching the end here. Uh, we've got about 25, 20 minutes left. Um, we did start late, but uh, we're kind of reaching the end of like our topic list here. Um, so, I mean, I think... Do we want to talk okay about to the questions, right? current banner? The, the upcoming um, banner with Hu Tao and uh, Elegy and things. I don't know if people are <sighs> curious about... The weapon uh, banner, we can talk about character really banners. Quickly. Real bad. I don't know if Slice this is banner reaction video yet because I haven't I didn't see it being uploaded on YouTube, but I imagine it's, you did uh, on it's Twitch. Kinda, it's happening. Okay, because I know I started uh, doing those I think, now. <laughs> I think the, the the main reason why the character banner is so bad is it has two healers on it, but you don't particularly want or need a healer in a Hu Tao team, and you want Bennett as your healer for your other team. So like they're fucking useless. <laughs> They're just really fucking useless. <laughs> really? 
I actually feel like the character banner is okay. Like it's, I actually think it's like compared to like putting Noel on the banner as a four star, I would say like it's much better than those. Like putting Noel or Yanfei like like but, individually, individually sure, but yeah. like, it's, are you gonna use those units if you pull for Hu Tao? Uh, it depends. Eh? I think mean, they're a good individual unit, and uh, they or oh, Hotoma have synergy with Hu Tao, so that's one. But individually, yeah, speaking, Toma, yes, but have, the other two, if if, if you have Kazuha, if you have Kazuha, yeah, if you have Kazuha, if you true. don't have Kazuha, Diona Kaya is still an option if you don't have Zhongli. It's so I think fine, it's fine. Yeah, but I it's think not it's great. I think it's the character banner and is Sayu's just right. completely useless. Ouch. Ouch. Sayu pain. Sayu pain. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I I don't know. I think the banner could be worse, but I also don't think it's that good. I've seen a lot of people saying, like, the banner is so good, but I don't particularly agree. Um, the weapon or the, the character? The character. Yeah, the weapon banner. Wait, people is, like, people are saying the, 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 the banner is so good? Yeah, yeah I, the that's banner. actually what I said. I actually, I, I like the character banner. What? I actually saying, I think it's fine. I think it's good. Personally. Do you have a name? <laughs> you was like way too thick. <laughs> you did say damn thick. <laughs> Wait, yeah, he was sliced there. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, did you guys? Were you guys yeah. king for me? Yeah, we were trying to see. No, what we were you're... just asking. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, on, yeah, on the yeah. character banner. Uh, I think it's a mixed bag. Yeah. Right? Um, I think that probably a lot of players who don't have some sort of because like people who are probably going to get into Utah are going to not be used to keeping her below a certain amount a certain amount of hp right because like if if this is your first character that's like hp based um they're not gonna be used to it so if they don't have a shielder to help them at least try out the character right um i feel like diona is actually like valuable on that banner um as because like besides zhang li i mean i mean noel but like you're not gonna use Noel with Hotel, right? Uh, and then Noel is also right? pretty. EML Beto. No, it's like it's like medium, medium ground, I would say, right? Like I think Dion is actually a useful character on the Hotel banner. I think Toma is going to be a nice pick because he's new and he's fresh and everyone likes new shiny things, right? Unfortunately, I think Sayu is just going to be right. Like if you happen to use Sayu, then you might pick up constellations for her. Mm. So. I think but there you is guys know that I'm to... more neutral stanced. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I think I there mean, is an argument to be made that people probably don't have that many Sayu cons because she's only had one banner so far. This is her second. But also, okay, it's but like. Who wants Sayu yeah, cons? Who, yeah, but like, you don't really need <laughs> Sayu. I'll take Especially Sayu if you have Shin Yen already. I'll take Sayu cons over Shin Yen, okay? Or like Noel. You guys are so mean. <laughs> when, yeah, we're like, so mean to Sayu. I just think okay. it <laughs> I don't know. I think I think I also agree with Sadra Finnegan. I don't think this banner is particularly <laughs> good. I actually didn't know what it was, but if you're saying it's Hu Tao, Sayu, um, and Diona and Toma. Yeah. Diona Toma and Toma. Toma. Yeah, so <laughs> if you ask Jay Stern, this is a really shit banner, except for Toma. Uh, he hates Diona. <laughs> oh, God. But, but it, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, I think your perspective is all right as well. Excellent slice but like I mean, it's yeah because it, like I, I read what you wrote and i'm like you know if you look at this from like if you were trying to like critique the writing man i said absolutely nothing right because i just think i just said everything was cool i don't want to offend any characters right i'm just like you know if you want to pull for these characters i'll like explain the value but that's about it i'm not gonna like trash any of them <laughs> that makes sense yeah <laughs> the weapon banner on the other hand but the weapon <laughs> banner i think it's <laughs> I personally think uh, it's the best weapon banner we have seen so far. Better than Homa WGS yeah, agree, and better than Jay Cutter J Spear. And this is by far the best weapon banner in existence. Even the four stars are okay. Anyone? What are the four stars? I forgot. It's the it's the two it's the bow, bow which is spear, useless. Right? Unless someone wants to take out one. Uh, the okay, new okay. pole arm, which is we can go for one by one. How about that? So let's start with the bow. Here. Does anyone want yeah, to bow... anyone have any thought about the bow? <laughs> I was well, thinking. The new, the new you, you, you want to know something good. really funny? You want to know something really, really funny? Mm -hmm. The bow in a in a well played child rotation on vape child is better than rust. 
Oh, I did that calc. Yeah, Cleefo saw me do that. I was doing that a couple days back. Oh. It is slightly better than Rust. If you have sufficient Bennett uptime. Okay. Rust. I didn't know that part. Rust, child. Those are, those are the fear crafting Confium. territory that casual player would go way too dang. If you play, if you yes. execute your rotation perfectly, your child would use that bow for Rust. <laughs> But, but yeah, the thing is just like, for the characters where you immediately think, maybe this is useful, like, Morgana gone you where she does so much damage with her burst, you're like, wait, Prototype Crescent exists. Why would, why would you need it? Because yep. Prototype Crescent is already better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great for a child new comp, that's true. I mean, I was, just talking about, uh, I was talking to Tenten about it earlier, I was like, I want to hazard, I want to add a word of caution here. People seem to think that Elegy is literally like, God's gift to Venti. It kind of is, but <laughs> only if you know how like to actually use this thing. I think yeah. the so so okay. Right. Let me let me finish it right. So for people who have been playing for a very long time that have like their stringless constellations or stringless refinements, it's less damage than the stringless. But I will give you credit that. The EM bonuses on Venti now are very strong. Very, very strong. The Elemental Mastery bonuses and the attack bonus from Elegy shouldn't be understated. But, in my opinion still, the answer to whether or not Elegy is a good weapon is it depends if you really want to make use of it. It's good by itself, but it only becomes exceptional like most of the... Oh. It's not like Freedom that. Sword. It's not where, like Freedom Sword where you just slot it in and it's automatically just the best of four weapon. It's just... If you know how to use it and what you're doing with it, it becomes very, very exceptional. I, I think I disagree with that because if if you don't really know what you're doing, the ER is going to help you so much. It gives like sixty um, percent ER. Like it's, it's for, like 50 for people uh, reference yeah, 55, right? 55. I think a R one elegy is five percent ish less damage than the R five stringless on Venti, but you gain the benefit of giving your entire party the buff and energy recharge uh mm -hmm. and sub stat is very hard to get on elemental mastery build because elemental mastery mains are so rare and the ideal scenario is that you get enough energy recharge from your sub stat like you're looking at about i think 140 on a venti uh but if you don't then uh, you might run into small er issues and elegy would basically solve Basically, if you don't have perfect artifact, you probably see an increase on your venti. So, my response is that how many characters are really going to be using LG? Yeah, right? that's my and problem. How many Support team compositions? And oh, don't say venti. God. Don't say venti. <laughs> Just don't say venti because I already yeah we already yeah, we already know go for it's, venti. Yeah. It's absolutely excellent on venti, but venti outside of venti. I see some people like, saying Diona, yeah. you can't actually proc Elegy on her holdy because of like ICD, I think. So you need to you use can proc her with, yeah. proc it with burst. You, you can, can proc, proc it with burst. burst. But it just takes eight yeah. seconds of proc because it's yeah, two it seconds per Yeah, but it's still an attack buff. It is still an attack buff, yeah. It's just difficult. Plus, Diona. Yeah, it's not that good on Diona, but it is Diona's best weapon. That is true. You can also so, use it. Like... Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, so when we start thinking about the situations where you could use it, where we would like for it to work like Sara, or maybe we want to use it on Diana, or if we use it with Amber or Ganyu, these are starting to dip into the territory where you're starting to use them for like very, very distinct purposes to maximize them. Sure, you can accidentally just play a little better and get a lot more damage out of it um, on accident, but you don't get a lot of value out of it unless you're intentionally working around it, in my opinion. I think that the thing about Elegy is it is a flexible weapon, but it sacrifices power because of you because it's a because of its ability to be used in more situations. So for example, like it's not going to give you a 30% a 30 percent damage increase on your main DPS. Um it's not like giving your Hu Tao a homo level, but it can be used on Sar. It can be used on Diona, technically, it can be used on Amber. And because it can be used on more supports, um, it's therefore less powerful. That's what I personally think. And Zajif is gone, so I don't have someone to say, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where did he go? Where did he go? I don't know, probably Wi-Fi issues. He Internet disconnected drop. once. 
Swap. Wait, is it oh. just PP poofed? Yeah. Yeah, he PP yeah. poofed. He pooped it. Goodbye, Zaja. Finally, <laughs> an open stage to shit talk Elegy. <laughs> Elegy sucks. Bennett sucks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yep, uh, guys, shut up now. Any particular thought on LG slice? Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a mid weapon, right? It's not. It's, oh god. So these weapons with like the proc time are always icky. You know, it depends on how well you can proc the passive. That's what it comes down to. Um, I think that the fifty percent reacher is actually really valuable. Um, just because. The characters that do use it, depending on the constellation level, right? Players might not have the ability to get their burst back. We're talking like uses on Sara and Venti, right? There's 60 or 80, 80, 60 energy cost. Venti shouldn't necessarily have a problem, um, but if you're running a pure EM based build, then he basically should have like basically zero recharge. Um, how much does the sentence that give? 32%, I think. Okay, so it's not like terrible, right? So if you go full EM build on Venti and you have like maybe 15% recharge from your substats, then you'll be sitting on like 145, which is okay for Venti, right? I'm gonna check my Venti real quick right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it depended on like how much you value the recharge and how well you can proc the passive. It's a mm -hmm. it's a situational weapon, in my opinion. That's true, yeah. Um, I think that's agreeable as well. I think that's kind of the point. I'm pushing back on like... How ubiquitous um elegy really ends up being like i'm at the point where i'm at the end game elegy is very very enticing for me like the type of boost that elegy could provide for my team comms is like pretty sizable um it's appreciative or appreciable but if like you know in like a couple banners we get ganyu amos or like we get another Skyward Harp, or we get bows. We get better bows that, like, are significantly better than Thundering Pulse and and um, whatever it is right now. Like, it seems it seems not too important for me to pull a weapon for your support. We we perhaps get a crit claymore. Perhaps. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. It. I mean, Serpent Spice so, a crit claymore. Um, for people who we earlier I taught I said how. Both Greystone and Home Up is not the best banner. It it was once regarded to be a very, very good banner when it first came out. But at the time I think people didn't realize Wolf Greystone was actually not that good. Plus the Luke was like so... What do you mean not that good? Like As in Skyward uh Serpent well, Spine. Spine. And also the fact that the Luke was a uh, quote unquote the premier DPS at the time who used it Wolf Greystone. Mm, okay. But nowadays, like, you know, that doesn't exist anymore, right? Like, you know, you don't have a- No, Wolf's Grace mm. is just a buff weapon. Yeah. That's yeah. I... It for. Mm. <laughs> it's a buff weapon. It is the Millennial Claymore, but not named Eula's Claymore. <laughs> Song of Broken Pines. <laughs> yeah, not named Song of Broken Pines. They have... Uh, the premium ETDS. <laughs> we want to go for the. <laughs> we want to go oh, for the God. four stars on the the other four stars on the weapon banner as well. Oh yeah, we need to talk about the speeder still, right? The wave breaker. I think it's called wave breaker. Yeah, fin. wave breaker's fin or wave rider's fin. I, I wave don't wave. know. Whatever. Yeah, wave wave breaker's fin. He knows because he has a weapon react Shangling. video that I watched it. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Shangling guide on KQM already got updated for it, and it's like at the top at R5. It's pretty I'm pretty sure it was yeah, calculated it before yeah. it was mm -hmm. announced on the banner, because the weapon banner got the weapon got announced individually a couple days ago, so it was calculated already. Yeah. But Ten Ten was asking me, I was like in Ten Ten's chat, and Ten Ten was like, hey, look at this uh, this Claymore Aku Amaru. Wouldn't it be great if there was a spear <laughs> version? Hey, Azo, can you do the calcs for me on yeah. it? I was like, okay, Ten Ten. But um, the claim, sorry, not the claim. The poem is um, it's kind of mixed feeling. It's uh, for me at least. Um, I think it's okay. The biggest problem is we have infinitely many Cash polearm. Is too good. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the problem is... it, it is a good polearm, and at high refine, it is Shangling's best in slot. Like if you don't have R5 Homa, but you shouldn't roll on it because you have the cash. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, you're, I'm looking at the the guide right now. It's it's literally six or two percent better than the cash. <laughs> so one, I actually have it at worse than cash. Yeah, not at R five one. It's at R five. At R five. Oh, at R five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's worse. really not that much. That's the thing, right? Like 
Homa on Changling is like a 7% DPS increase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Compared to catch, it's just not that valuable. Right. And yeah. neither is Wavebreaker. Lazy Fishers, man. Come on. <laughs> I, I still don't have a single copy. Of the I still don't have a single copy of the cash either. Even though I streamed what? the game. What is it? So, I, so let me tell you what's been happening in Three Craft series. We're all burned out. Let us <laughs> like maybe outside of Zajab, like almost everyone is just so burned out. Well, that's fair. I mean, I, mean, I was considering just paying I, someone fifty dollars. I'm also burned out, but I don't really have a choice. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's your job, so. just choose not to play the game because uh, uh, I'm lazy. We started school, and I, like uh, our staff is mainly like pretty young. We're not in, like high school or anything, but like college and stuff. Well, so. one of us mm. is high school. One of us. Got me. Rude. I'm not gonna yeah, name ten, names, ten. but <laughs> yeah, it's ten ten. Yeah, exactly. What the? Uh, ten ten, I... the game developer in high school still. <laughs> I'm just lazy to yeah. actually play the game. My, at the time of recording this podcast, my resident was full. Oh wait, uh -huh. I think mine is full Do too. We... Um, here's a more yeah. casual topic. Do we care about to talk about the the state of Genshin? Do we do we have time? Do we want to talk about? Mm. Mm, I think this we is... have seven minutes left, so we can probably. I mean, it's up to slice. Do you want to? I feel like this is not about this. Obviously, this is not about you guys, question. right? How you guys want to run it? I'm just here to, you know, listen and like chime in when. I'm not a. Oh, this is obviously not a free crafting topic, but I think it would be semi interesting for people to to hear about because this is a hot topic. I I saw people saying like even Envy is not playing Genshin anymore. So, sure. Kind of we can discuss topic. it. If you want. We can start with slice because he streams the game every day. Go for it, slice. <laughs> oh well, I mean, wow bro you keep on the spot wait what's the no what's i mean it's, it's fine yeah, yeah so like <laughs> if we're talking about genshin's end game uh there is none right like that's just i don't consider abyss 36 star end game content it's just abyss oh it isn't takes like four to six months um with like above average investment Probably now it's different. I'm, I'm taking four to six months, like if we go pre 2.0, so it's probably changed quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so like most streamers who are making content on this game, it's just just chatting, right? While you're just like hanging mm -hmm. out with your chat, or you're doing variety stuff, mm -hmm. or you do whatever random event is the spice of life for the two weeks that it, the event's out. Um, YouTube wise, it's waiting for patch notes, trying to create your own original content um yeah i like it's i don't know what people will like <laughs> instead of i feel like for creators right we don't really want to tackle that subject we kind of want to just like use that as an excuse to do other things you know eternal return <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> so like as an excuse to play other games for example right we don't want to push the the essence of like Give Genshin more endgame content. Because I think that's I think that's like a generally well perceived notion is like everyone wants some type of repeatable endgame content. But I think Mihoyo has their own development cycle for the game. So whether or not it happens, like we're gonna we can be an echo chamber, but it's not gonna actually change anything. Yeah, that's kind of sad. I think that it's also just hard for because like a large portion of the streamers, theory crafters, whatever, they play the game a lot. They're already at the point where they can 36 star easily. There's not much more to do. But me how you can't just cater to those people. They also have to cater to the other people who are like starting the game late or maybe they just play log in once every 3 days, once every 4 days. They aren't at that point. And I guess it's just like I'm not a game designer, so I I don't know what right. what my solution would be to like how can we make it so that everyone enjoys the game, and it just it's kind tough. of sucks, you know. And there just needs to be an actual. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no no no! I I could because like when we get into this type of talk, it's kind of kind of like because <sighs> creators can get passionate in like different ways, right? Um, it's it's strange because. From, from a development cycle, they don't cater to us. But even if they did cater to us, people are still going to be angry. The type of endgame content has to be done correctly. 
Like, there's so many factors when it comes involved in this that it like, it makes it so ripe for like implosion. I think is the right word. What so, do like, you mean? I don't really know how to put it that well. Besides, they can just copy paste existing stuff from other like successful games and their end game content and like make their own version in Genshin if they want to do that. Maybe they're already planning that, you know, who knows? Um, right, say, like say for this Omnyoji event, right? Like they, they could set it up in a way that's kind of like um, Tower Ascension or Contingency Contract with a bunch of like HP scaling stuff or decreasing your own team's stuff, randomizers. Um, so. You know, <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah, stop because the, 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 the main is problem I'm is just, there's. I'm just saying random shit. <laughs> we kind of all are. Don't worry. <laughs> the main yeah. problem is there's just there's just no gameplay loop. Like we've got a way to improve our damage, but we've got nothing to use it on. Yeah. Like it's just it it doesn't feel good to fucking anyone to just improve your damage for no reason. Mm -hmm. Loops. And like, let's use it on I each was, other. I was, I wanna, I wanna one shot. <laughs> I wanna one shot. Zajus Bennett, okay? <laughs> PvP. <laughs> PvP is in the game. Amber PvP. So at me. Oh my god, Amber PvP was so fun. I yeah, we should do that again at some point. That was fun. <laughs> True. Uh, for a slice, if you're not aware, it's basically you just light fires under other people's feet with Amber in the <laughs> world. Well, we have. Really HP. That, that's really cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, I think um, I, I think right, like a, a really simple, straightforward way would be use assets they already have, right? So remember the um, what was it called? Uh, energy amplifier event. Uh, I think right, so. Right, where yeah. you the had like, the, getting, like these things that buff. they called fractured fruits. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, they were, they were basically just buffs, right? Well, you make these a drop that you can get from bosses, and you make, or not not from bosses, but from 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 content, and you make the the content be what we have right now as the event, and you make a really a lot of floors that each have a chance to drop rarer and better fractured fruits. And then you've got a gameplay loop with already existing assets. Such. I think that's interesting to think about. Um, I think the, although I would like that a lot personally, I'm just not sure if Mikoyo would do that because a lot of people don't really participate in that or don't like it. I think like one good example, I don't remember who told me this. Uh, someone was telling me about it. But, like, more people play the, like, Hunters and Seekers thing, uh, the hide-and-seek thing, than, Wind like, uh, yeah, Windrace. Um, yeah, that's like it's, it's an event, yeah. right? There's... Yeah, but more people play that than, like, some of the, the other events. Is... Uh, and he's gone. <laughs> oh, into the thing is, only heavy disconnects. Eh. I mean, actually, I actually heard that, um, the... What is that boss rush oh, event that we had? Um... Vagabond. Yeah. Vagabond, yeah. I heard that event was actually very unpopular um, yeah. among the general Genshin. I mean, they, fu it they was... really fucked up the, the, the game design for it. Because mm. instead of making giving you things that make you stronger, they gave you things that made you weaker. And that's how they <laughs> made, like, instead of making enemies strong and then, oh my god, I'm, I'm on like a million thing right now. Okay. <laughs> Can you guys yeah. hear me properly? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I heard the monka E2. Ah. Okay. Cause like I, I was I was walking on geo shots for like 50 seconds and they wouldn't <laughs> take any damage and then they just died. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? What was I saying? Something about making I people. Either. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the biggest problem with Vagabond and the reason I didn't like the event either was that the fucking cooldown reduction debuff. Why? Oh why would you ever design this? Why? <laughs> what is wrong? Why? 
What is the yeah, thought process painful. behind that abomination? <laughs> what did what did you actually think about X? Or, I keep saying X slice. slice. I call. I used if to call. Don't... I used to cool call down, the cooldown reduction is very very brutal, and I don't think coincides with the trajectory of the game considering that the game is you know quite but even even normal attackers right the the way the way that they the game makes normal attackers um or left clickers used is by applying something to that normal attack whether it's on the elemental skill or whatever right so so cutting the cooldown i think was a very poor decision they could have done without that right like i agree with the jeff's like thinking like you can add certain negative debuffs, but don't kill the gameplay. Yeah. I like yeah. just loading it wasn't the just difficult, floor it, and just dying. It wasn't fun. Like, cause some it may come it, to put in Britta, it practically makes some character like unusable because you know you like for example, Chayo would have a one minute long cooldown elemental skill, which make him kind of unusable. On the other hand. There's certain character that just didn't get affected at all because of those like it's like you have to use those character or you just get kaboom yeah. like ganyu for that's example actually, that, that's actually true it is actually so funny that the best units for that event were the units that could just brute force their ways to these negative events these negatives like even on the floors that had like 50 percent reduced charge attack damage the best units to use were fucking Hu Dao and ganyu <laughs> it's actually it, it's actually so incredible like yeah some of these negatives they disproportionately affect the Genshin roster because they're all they're built different. Honestly, like some units are just better than others. They're just built different. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, it is uh, 9 p.m. It is uh, time. I don't know if you guys want to close with anything. I think we had a good discussion. Usually we do questions here, but sure. yeah, 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 we, we can just do end it here. Yeah. You can uh, just give a quick outro. For questions, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we usually do questions after uh, the outro. So. Oh, yeah. okay. Um. So yeah, this is going to be the end of the fourth, uh, roundtable, guys. Uh, I believe Ten Ten will be the one who's uploading it this time, and it'll show up in the playlist on Jin Jinx's channel. But um, it's been fun having you guys, and thank you, Fob Master, for uh rating us earlier. Um. So. Yeah. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, as always, I'm Artisans. I am the head of 3D Company at KQM. You can find all our resources and our stuff on our website, our Discord, and all that stuff. And then whoever wants to close out next. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Hit the bell icon. The bell. Only okay, twenty percent of people I'll who do, watch our I'll videos are subscribed. I'll do your exits. I'll do your exits. Okay, Hazel, if they want to find more of you, where can they find you, or will you be anywhere? Well, I just left the KQM server to focus on work, so nowhere. <laughs> okay. Um, normally, you'll find Tenten in the theory crafting session, but he's actually he's on hiatus right now to focus on other things. Tenten, where can people find you if they want to see more of you? Uh, if you're watching the broadcast on the vlog, you're already on the YouTube channel. Uh, I have uh, all the link to everybody social on the display right now. Uh, so just click the link. Probably yep. gonna be in the description then, too. That Jeff, where can people find you? On twitch.tv slash thejeff77, where I use my scuffed ass fucking setup to try to stream and then have 900 ping. He need a new headphone. <laughs> and then... And then our <laughs> special guest this time was Slice. Thank you very much for joining us this time. Um, sorry that we started late and a bit unstructured, but we definitely do appreciate you on. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks where can people me. find you? Uh, I mean, besides just the streaming thing, I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, it was just this was just a good opportunity. I don't think like need to need to sell out or anything. So wow. thanks for having me. And this was a very nice discussion. Yeah. Wow! 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 Okay. So what he um, needs to say is you can find him uh, at his YouTube channel. Uh, no. X, X <laughs> cut! <Slice>. Cut! <laughs> cut! You're not going to be a sellout. Zajef is yeah, going to sell Yeah, you can actually find him. him at twitch.tv slash <laughs> Yeah, You can find him on twitch.tv slash No, 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 no. twitch.tv slash 1010 games. That's oh. slice. Uh,
Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to open the floor for a couple questions, yeah. and then uh, you guys can leave at any time you want here. 